we've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Austin? I am doing well, Jared. Welcome to the Tuesday episode. Happy to be here. If you uh, missed the Monday episode and you're wondering who is this and why are you here, um, please go back and watch Scarlet and Grade. It was a really fun episode. Um, I'm getting two guests host basically for Kyle while he's out on vacation. Um, I'm Austin. I'm from the Discord, one of the mods there. And so, um, yeah, I've been listening for a really long time. And so happy to happy to be here guest hosting with Jared. Um, if you want to join me in the Discord, you can go to discord.thesloopcast.com. Please, please do and say hello to me. I would love to talk to you. Such a pro. How are you such a what pro? What can I say? I don't know. Always be plugging things that you don't even necessarily, like not a financial. I mean, obviously, like you're in the community too. So I guess you have like an emotional stake in it, but. Yeah, and I mean, even beyond that, go to patreon.thesloopcast.com. There's oh. all really cool stuff you can get there too. Wow. So, I mean, there's just, there's so much going on, please. And he's not getting a cut for that. Like. I'm really not. You know, God, no. <laughs> there's not that much to go around. <laughs> Yeah, if that tells you anything about the community and about, um, you know, why you should join us and hang out with us and talk to us. And it's a really good time. It's a good community. I'm not getting anything to say this. Um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, if I am, I am a, I guess, I, I, I was gonna say I'm a paying customer. It doesn't really, it, that's not what it feels like. So you can't really, like, I don't want to put it like that. But like, I'm not getting any money from this. Just come join us. We have a great time. Um, Discord.thesloopcast.com, Patreon. That's in fact, you're actually, I mean, you're kind of paying money to do this. Kind of. Not not way. this specifically. If you said, this. hey, I, yeah, but like you're a premium member of the Discord. Right. Which is $3 a month. $3. That's it. Minimum. Join like, us. You can pay more yeah. if you want. Um. Yeah. So let's let's get into the show. This is the show where we review the uh the week of games and we had some chaos this week a lot of chaos we had some chaos this week um we had like one chaos ish game last week um it was a, it, was, it was an okay chaos game. we had some legit chaos in this game or this this week um but uh, we don't we don't have to get into all of that right away. We'll get there in time. Let's let's roll through this um, as it happened. Um, UTSA, uh, who lost last week, uh, University of Texas San Antonio. If you don't know, the Roadrunners uh, barely beat Army. They were they were legitimately supposed to be one of the better uh, group of five teams this year. Um, barely beat army lost in week one. We can, we can maybe take them off the radar now. Thoughts. Yep. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> that's, that's about, that's about it. Yeah. I mean, army's always going to be army. Um, UTSA has a fun offense, I think at least. Yeah. I, that's about all I really have to be honest. Uh, North Carolina, Kyle, I, I just called you Kyle Austin. It probably helps us bring up North Carolina. Um, yeah. Tar Heels, 3-0. and Yet. Yeah, I mean, if... You, and, you know, there's... One of their wins was against an Appalachian State team, who we will get to. Um, True. But they won that game by two points. They beat Georgia State in this game 35-28. That's what the spread was. Um, so they pushed. Um they're not overly impressive, but then again, they also play in the ACC who the ACC doesn't really have a great team. Um, unless you believe that Clemson is a great team, in which case North Carolina might be the second best team in the ACC at this point, unless you believe in Miami, which I think eh. it's better, but we'll get to pit later. Yeah. I'm, regardless, UNC is a middling to higher end ACC team and they barely beat Georgia state. They barely beat Appalachian State. They're being three and zero doesn't really mean much for me, but good for them. Yeah, uh, it's they're almost like the anti Nebraska. We'll get to them yeah. later too. Um, Nebraska keeps losing close games. UNC and and then UNC keeps winning close games, but they're winning close games against teams they should not be winning close games against. 
Yeah, but I mean, also, you know, you can, you, I'm a big proponent of you can only beat who you're playing. So sure. they are winning. And if they continue to win, I will eat my words. But I well, I'm just saying, like, these are the, what would be the state of Columbus and Buckeye Nation as a whole if they beat Georgia State by seven points? Yes. Yeah, that's, okay. that's a great point. Yeah. Okay. And for that matter, the state of Clemson or Oklahoma or Georgia, Alabama, whoever. Alabama yeah. USC, even. Yeah. R- rioting doesn't do it justice, Zach, to what would happen in the streets of Columbus. <laughs> uh, there'd be some online rioting at the very least. Uh, Northwestern. Clemson, Alabama, would be a gritty win. Fair point. <laughs> Well, you know, Georgia State's actually really good, you guys. <laughs> uh, Duke defeats Northwestern. So that whole maybe Northwestern's actually good, you guys, and Nebraska's not actually that bad has, has been flushed down the toilet uh, for multiple reasons. And again, we'll get to Nebraska later. Uh, but Northwestern losing to Duke um, gave us a preview earlier in the day about how Nebraska might not actually seriously actually not be that good. Yeah, yeah, I do want to touch real quick. Uh, you did skip over these two, but I feel like they kind of matter that Miami did beat terrible Southern Miss 30 to 7, and then Arkansas beat South Carolina 44 30. I only say that because Miami, always fun to see them lose eventually when everyone ranks them very high, and then they eventually end the season 6 and 6. Um, and then Arkansas, I think, is actually a really good team this year. Um, very good at running the ball. So just want to touch you, on them. But if you want me to believe that Arkansas is actually pretty good. I want I want you to beat. I don't want South Carolina to score 30 points on you. No, I don't think their defense is that great, but I think offensively they have one of the best rushing attacks in the country. So, yeah, oh, yeah, their offensive line is great. Their quarterback yeah. is decent enough. He's not amazing, but he's he's pretty good. Um, and the running backs are pretty good. Yeah, but the. When it when it comes down to actually playing the big boys of college football, their defense is just meh. And then the main event of college football that started the chaos to, uh, on Saturday at 12 o'clock, Alabama squeaking by by the hair on their chin against Texas in Austin, 20 to 19 off a basically last second field goal. I. I, we were watching this game at, uh, during the social screen. Uh, we had the noon game on for the social screen. The noon games on for the social screen. Ski- oh, my goodness. Mm-hmm. The noon games on for our social screens, which if you don't know, that's when we all get together and watch a watch a game in the Discord server. Um, I said it then. I'll say it again right now. I want to see the alternate history here where uh, yours doesn't get hurt. Because he was slinging it. And I know there's a lot of Ohio State fans who, you know, want to want to hate on yours because. Right. Because. Um, and by the way, I would even also like to see a um, I'd like to see an alternate history where um, Card is. He stayed in the game, but he was in bad shape. Um, playing well, like not not banged up like. They they lost their primary quarterback and their secondary quarterback was playing at 80 percent, 75 percent by the end of the game. Not not playing well because he's a, he's a runner first. It'd be one thing if he was a pocket passer and he was kind of hobbled, but he's he's a running. He's a, he's recruited as a dual threat quarterback to Texas and his legs were not with him by the end of the game at all. Um, so. If Texas had stayed healthy, even somewhat healthy, uh, this this game could have ended differently. Um, meanwhile, uh, take a take a quick peek behind the scenes over uh, at the University of Alabama. Nick Saban's on the phone with his athletic director saying, never, ever, ever send me to an actual road game ever again. This is this yeah. is Alabama's first true road game since they played sanction decimated Penn state in happy Valley in, was it 11 or 12? I think it was 11. 
but it was, it was something like that. I mean, yeah, it, I mean, even some of the Alabama players said after the game that it was the loudest that they've heard a stadium. And I mean, yeah, that's, that's what happens when you, you go on the road and you play difficult teams. And I mean, on, on the road, like, I mean, Zach says in the chat that if viewers doesn't go down, Texas wins by two touchdowns. It, it's kind of hard to not see that actually be the case, which is ludicrous to kind of say when before this game, a lot of people, yourself included, did not give Texas a fighting chance in this game. And I, I yeah. did pick them to cover, but I definitely didn't see it being this close. You know, I thought that maybe the final score would be something along the lines of, you know, 34, 17 or 42, 28, like, but you know, 20 to 19 in a game where, and you know, I know there's a lot of calls that went against Alabama. Alabama was flagged a lot in this yeah. game, but at the same time, they should have been flagged a lot more um, for a lot of egregious holding penalties. You know, there was the much debated safety in the end zone. That wasn't a safety, but then it was roughing the passer and it was actually targeting, but it wasn't. And, the referees in this game were just horrible um, and they still flagged Alabama a lot, but there was so much more Yeah, they should have been flagged for. And part of that I think is that they played on the road um, in, in Austin. And I think the crew was a big 12, no, not big 12 ACC crew. That feels right. I, I don't know. I I'm, I'm not sure, but it was big 12 gangland says it was a big 12 crew. Ooh, that's interesting. Then is it though? That doesn't, well, I guess, um but yeah the the, i mean fact of the matter here is that this is probably why bama likes to play those neutral site games huh neutral site or at home i mean texas and like like i said it was a last second field goal like alabama could have lost this game yeah i think what's what's they were in severe danger of losing this game yeah and what's crazy about it is that the worst part of the Alabama team in this game, in my opinion, was the offensive line. And to yeah. say that about an Alabama team, like the offensive line was terrible. Like they were getting beaten one on ones. They were holding. They had miscues like they couldn't run blocks like they were getting eaten alive by a Texas defense that like. Sure, sure they've got some guys. Absolutely. Texas is always going to have some guys, but it's not like it's some vaunted defense. Like this, this is a defense that you should have exposed and you were only able to score 20 points and you were barely able to do that. Uh, that's a good point. Gangland points out that it is a uh, Gary Patterson defense. Yeah. Uh, that's but, probably but even a higher still, that we're not paying enough attention to, honestly. But Th- this, but I mean, <laughs> this more than any Texas win I've seen since the Mac Brown era convinces me that texas might actually be back more than any win i've ever seen them get this loss convinces me more than any of that that texas no no, no Zach. Be he, back. He, he didn't say texas is back don't 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 <laughs> not not yet you, we need to see a couple more games because texas also loves to do this thing i said might they, yeah they'd like to do this thing where oh we beat oklahoma we're actually really good and then they'll go out the next week and lose to kansas so especially with their quarterback now being hurt and that, that's the really sad part. A lot of people, especially Ohio State fans, and you know, obviously the, the audience of the Sloopcast is predominantly Ohio State fans. You don't want to see Quinn Ewers succeed. And I get it. And, and, it's, and it's the thing that a lot of people think of, well, Tate Martell and Quinn Ewers, they're like basically, no, they're yeah. not the same guy. Quinn Ewers is an incredible talent. And like, is he a little cocky? I don't know. Maybe he is, maybe he isn't, but he is way more talented than Tate Martell was. He is going to be a great quarterback for Texas. If he can stay healthy, like he he's going to be around for the next couple of years. And a lot of people specifically in the big 12 and maybe nationally, depending on how Texas does, he's, they're going to have to go through Quinn Ewers. He's done after next year. He's got, he, uh, yeah. unless something crazy sure. happens, he's yeah, it's, it's this year and next year. And by the way, uh, injury report is back uh, four to six weeks for Ewers. Yeah. Um, if you're feeling at all bad, if you're feeling at all bad about Ohio State's 45 to 12 win over Arkansas State, let me point you to the Clemson game uh, where <laughs> they win 35 to 12 against Furman. Yeah. Furman. If you're asking yourself, who's Furman? Exactly. 
Yeah, Furman's right down the road from Clemson. Um, so it's like, I'm pretty sure back in the day, like very much back in the day, it was probably a rivalry. And now it's like, it's kind of like how Ohio State is with like Cincinnati or Akron. It's like, oh, you guys are so cute. You want to come make a million and a half dollars to come play us? Sure. And then or, you know, to 12. capital Oberlin. <laughs> I'm exaggerating. Honestly, like Youngstown State. Dayton. Yeah, that's next up. Yeah. Um next up, I I wanted to see an alternate history. So is Youngstown State. Dayton's yeah, FCS. So is Furman for that matter. So is yeah. Furman. That's that was the point. <laughs> uh Texas and Pitt. Uh another game in Tennis which I would Pitt. like to see did I say did I say the wrong thing? You said the wrong UT, but it's okay. Tennessee and Pitt. Um Tennessee and Pitt. Uh again, another game where I'd like to see the alternate history of the uh of the game. Um Pitt loses Slovis. And again, much like the uh the Texas game, their backup quarterback was kind of hobbled by the end of that game as well. Um I like I think Texas wins the game if Ewers stays healthy. I think Pitt wins this game if Slovis stays healthy. Um I think Tennessee mm, is uh incredibly vulnerable from the defensive standpoint, and they have some kinks to work out on an offense that should be pretty good, lots of talent on that team. Um, but also like missing some steps here or there, not 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 quite completely ironed out yet. Yeah, I, I think that my my issue with saying that Pitt wins the game if you know Slovis doesn't get hurt is that I think besides quarterback, Tennessee was probably better at almost every other position in this game. Um, which, you know, that shows how much influence obviously a quarterback can have on a game. You know, a quarterback can go out there and and really the Patty, the backup quarterback for Pitt, he was also hobbled and he, you know, he he tried his best. He stuck in there and like they Pitt were, had their third string quarterback in at one point. I think it was only yeah, for they, a drive or two, but Pitt had to put in their third string quarterback for it. It was a drive or two. Yeah. And, and I mean, Pitt came back, you know, they were down um, and they, they drove the field forced overtime. They went to overtime, Tennessee scores. And it was like, it just, it really felt like, okay, it, it's probably done here. Pitt, it, they just, you know, they went as far as they can go. Their quarterback is hobbling around. I mean, yeah, they were, he, Hey, and listen, as I said this in the, in the chat, I was like, this guy has some nuts of steel. Cause you know, I think there was like two or three fourth down conversions that like he slung a ball in. I mean, yeah. he threw one really nice pass on fourth down to get the touchdown to force OT and like, you know, quarterback play goes to pit. And I think that, you know, if this game wouldn't have went to overtime and would have gone on for another five minutes in some alternate world, I think Pitt probably does, does win. Um, I'm just, I, in, in my opinion, you have a basically like the college equivalent of a journeyman quarterback playing most of this game for Pitt. They lost a drive or two to a third string quarterback. And I don't think he, they let him throw the ball once. No. Um, in a game that goes to overtime, in a game that goes to overtime, you have to tell me that Slovis, who was slinging the rock, makes enough of a difference in a game that goes to overtime to tip the scales in Pittsburgh's favor. I think so. Unfortunately, it's not what happened, but I think you're probably right. All right. Our first big, our first big chaos moment of the day, um, Appalachian State. The giant killing Mountaineers knock off number six, Texas A&M. Yeah, and they were paid them one point five million dollars to do it, too. So <laughs> that that's and by the way, they covered in case you were wondering, Texas yeah, A&M was an 18 point favorite going into this game. Yeah, uh, Jared, uh, do you know how many points they scored in this game? 14. <laughs> Yeah, they didn't even score the amount of points they were supposed to cover by. I mean, that's a that's a this, recurring theme from Ohio State, um, from Clemson, from Alabama, not even scoring the number you're supposed to win by. Yeah. And I mean, this this is goes back to what we were talking about earlier on the episode about North Carolina, whereas like 
is North Carolina actually good? Well, that depends. Is Appalachian State actually good? And then it goes right. on to, well, that depends. Is Texas A&M actually good? This is the I, game I, you I, play in week two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, well, I guess we're going to have to find out. I mean, they were the number six ranked team in the country, but a lot of that has to do with the fact that, like, Texas A&M has had, I mean, last year they had the greatest recruiting class in the history of recruiting. They, I mean, Gangland's kind of right. They are a little bit of a dumpster fire. They've had a top five, 10 class each of the past five cycles. Jerry, can you tell me how many of Appalachian State's past five recruiting uh, cycles have been in the top 75? In the top 75? In the country. How many of Appalachian State's last five recruiting cycles were in the top 75? One. Correct. It was one. And, and it was one, 75. No, it was 64. But okay. still. I mean, it's still very obvious that, yeah, Texas A&M had superior talent in this game. They got out coached. I mean, Jimbo at this point, I think, has proven that he is not a great coach who happened to have a great quarterback. He is an okay coach that happened to have a generational college quarterback. Yeah. And that's why he won a national championship. And that's he's how he the got Gus the Miles on of. Yeah. Well, Texas A&M or, yeah, yeah. yeah. there's no, there's no decent way on. for me to end yeah. that sentence, but you know what I'm saying? He's, yeah. He's the Gus Miles on that. You could have just ended yeah. there. I mean, he, he's a guy that was carried to a national championship by a quarterback and by, you know, he recruited that team. So like good on him. Kelvin Benjamin was on that team. Like Rashad green. I remember all those guys like, they were good, but now that he, you know, he's recruited all these guys and he doesn't have that generational quarterback, he loses to Appalachian State. Yangland, oil money pouring in through the floorboards and they got beat by a failed Clemson quarterback. Oh, that's harsh. Uh, True. Put that one in the Hall of Fame. Yikes! It, that, that's 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 one of those. You're not wrong, but you didn't have to say it, <laughs> man. Uh, speaking of things that feel wrong, um, Washington State beat Wisconsin. I, how? And like not by scoring a lot of points, like you would assume a Washington State team would do. Like it was it was 17 to 14, just like the previous game. The Big Ten West took L after L after L after L this week. Yeah, it really needs to be the Big Ten East and the Big Ten least um, is what it feels like this year. I was really trying to hype up. Uh, we d During the Big Ten preview, I said two things. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to make sure to get myself on both sides. I said two things. I said, one, that I think that the Big Ten West, uh, aside from Ohio State, Put, a, put Ohio State on the shelf for a second. Aside from Ohio State, it was going to be the better conference in the Big Ten this year. I was wrong. I was wrong. I was wrong. Mm. Um, that being said, I also said uh, during that preview, because we were working through the pick six preview at the time, and I think they had Nebraska as like number two in the Big Ten West. And I just said, no, like, I don't. I, I it was just like I, I kept saying, I don't understand where this Nebraska hype's coming from. I don't understand where this Nebraska hype is coming from. And I mean, I'm I'm not going to try and claim we'll get to, to them be, and, we, and we'll get there. We'll get to Scott Frost. Um, but man, it's it's real bad in the Big Ten West right now. Yeah, and I mean, again, it's one of those things where Wisconsin was favored by 17 and a half. Jared, how many points did they score? Uh, 14. Yeah. Yeah. So that's uh, that's Team Chaos event number two. Uh, Wisconsin favored by 17 and a half points was the ranked team in the game. That's, that's a, that's a chaos moment for sure. Yeah. Then following on from them, uh, just to touch on it real quick, the new AP poll is out. Um, and that's relevant because Georgia beat Samford, which I mean, again, you know, Samford, but Georgia does beat them 33 to zero. And that does after Alabama's performance against Texas caused them to move up to number one in the rankings. So um, they we, did we not should cover. acknowledge, we should acknowledge that maybe that has to do with more of the fact that they beat Oregon in week one than than beating Samford. By the way, they beat <laughs> Oregon much harder than they beat Samford somehow. Yeah, um, because uh, maybe Georgia's overrated. Yeah, okay, Gangland, you keep thinking that, buddy. Um, just because you asked, though, um, Georgia was favored in this game by 53 points. Jared, how many points did they score? 33. All right, well. Yeah. Moving right along. Yeah. 
Michigan State stomped Akron. I circled that, and I'm questioning why I circled that. Uh, they but did they cover, stomped Akron. So that's, that's they nice did cover. Covered. Look at that. Someone finally covered. Um, Rutgers destroyed Wagner. Um, I, I've never heard of Wagner either. It's okay. Um, but Illinois. Hey, Rutgers- How is Illinois the best performing team in the Big Ten West right now? Um, I mean, Minnesota, kind of, I guess. Okay. Eh. But Illinois is the only team. The only team in the Big Ten mm-hmm. West this week. I'm stealing this from Tom Moore. Credit to Tom Moore. I'm only team in the Big Ten West this week to defeat an FBS opponent. Yeah. I mean, I don't. Did Minnesota even play this week? Um, They did. Yeah, they, they beat uh, WIU, whoever that is. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, it, Illinois, like, they have to be being turned around somehow because, I mean, they, they beat Virginia 24-3. to 3, um, But two, they're 2-1 and one now. There have been some seasons in the past 10 years where, where Illinois has won two games all season. And they've won two games in the first three games. That, that fan base is probably elated. I, they haven't even noticed yet. <laughs> basketball season's coming around the corner so yeah <laughs> um jared everyone's favorite game from the weekend yeah the battle for the cyhawk the cyhawk Iowa game State, Iowa. yeah i knew this was over when isu scored 10 points <laughs> yeah yeah iowa did score seven points though and it wasn't an iowa seven it was just a touchdown and an extra point like they, they wow. decided to go the normal way amazing good for- Good for them, I guess. No, oh, I yawned just at the mention of an Iowa football game. Yeah, uh, can't blame you. Uh, Texas Tech defeats Houston. Uh, this is not a good year for the group of fives that are supposed to be good. No, I well, there's a there's a team that we'll get to later. That's not necessarily a group of five. But again, we'll we'll get to them a little bit later. Um and Jared's probably racking his brain to try and figure out who I'm talking about. But, right, but then you there. immediately said, but he's, but they're not a group of five. There's a group of five team. We'll, we'll get to, but they're not a group of five. You know, just, just, I, there's a, there's a method to my madness. We will get there. Okay. Um, Kansas scored 55 points. Kansas, in like a power five game. Kansas is two and O oh. you want to talk about a team that sometimes doesn't win two games in an entire season. They're lucky to win one. And they're another two and O. Oh? And by the way, West Virginia is not a total slouch of a football team. They took Pitt down to the wire uh, just last week. Um, not a slouch of a football team, West Virginia. They're not world beaters, but it's, 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 a, it's a decent enough team that I'm impressed that Kansas beat them. I mean, I'm impressed when Kansas beats anyone, but damn. Yeah, Kansas, I mean, Kansas, who's their coach? Well, I don't know um... either. No, uh, I, mm, I do know it, and I'm going to have to look it up because I can't remember. You go ahead and look it up. I'm it's just Lance saying. Leopold. That's right. That's right. It is. Um, I'm just going to toss this out there because the man has Kansas at 2-0. and uh, He Nebraska. Nebraska. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. Nebraska. We we haven't we haven't gotten there yet, Jared. Oh, sorry, sorry. We'll get we'll get to Nebraska. We'll get we'll get the Scott Frost. We'll get there. Um, I, promise. I do want to say as well, Kansas was a fourteen point underdog in this game, and they won by thirteen. So good for them. Happy for um, all the Jayhawk fans, all seven of the Jayhawk football fans. Yeah, they're they're like Illinois. They're just waiting for basketball season. This is a yeah. this is a pleasant distraction until basketball season comes around. All right, Austin, are you ready for the next one, buddy? Yeah, I'm I'm prepared. Okay. Uh, Austin's one of those those people that you see on Reddit that has two icons next to their... Eh. <laughs> Clear. Uh, Buckeyes that's, first. That's, that's taking it a little far, I think. Okay. Just because I called you a Redditor or because... Yes, both, okay. both of the reasons. Uh, you, you are a Florida, a Florida grad. Yes. Yes. Uh, in our third... True team chaos moment of the week. Uh, Kentucky defeats Florida. 
are they just waiting? Is this a pleasant distraction for football season or are the Kentucky fans actually in on this? Uh, so Kentucky has gotten a lot better. Like it, it has to be said, they are a respectable football team at this point where they used to be a laughing stock. I, I think that this actually is more indicative that both of these teams are really mid um, rather than Kentucky actually being good and beating a good Florida team. Like they'll, they're in the SEC, so they'll probably end up being ranked in the mid teens by the end of the season, both of them. But if, if they can win like seven or eight games, but it's just, it's just a fact of rankings fatigue where they're both ranked very highly right now. And so one beats the other, they shoot up the rankings. Like Florida's in a rebuild. Um, Kentucky actually has a really good chance to win a lot of games this year, simply because their quarterback is pretty good. Like Will Levitz is a pretty good quarterback. He can play a little ball and, you know, he, he made some really good throws in this game. He managed the game. Well, um, yeah, like Zach said, they're using the portal. Well, like Stoops gets it. Like he is the head coach there. He fits in with the culture. He fits in with everything that Kentucky's trying to do. And the best thing is, like you just said, they're a basketball school. So there's not a lot of pressure there. Right. You know, if you, if you're at Florida that, you know, isn't necessarily just a basketball school or you're at, um, you know, what's another good basketball is like Louisville, who is Michigan. a basketball school, like Michigan. Yeah. Which is a basketball school. There's still pressure on their football team where for Kentucky, it's like, Oh, you can win eight games a season. Perfect. We'll keep on giving you a raise and you can stay a lot, stay around. Um, so sh I mean, shout out to Kentucky for winning this game. They absolutely deserved it. Um, I think it's really just more of a earmark that both of these teams are just fine. I agree. Uh, it was it was a, obviously a bit of a uh, overreaction to Rocket Florida up the rankings after one game, even if it was a good win last week. But it was a little bit of an overreaction. Uh, yeah, I think it also shows that Utah is probably not as good as everyone thought that they would be. Um, I mean, they play in the Pac-12 and it, Jared, can I, can I do the thing? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you... The Pac-12 sucks. So I had to let you have that. Thank you. Um, yeah. The but, yeah the yeah. the Pac twelve sucks. Um, the the aside from uh, honestly at this point aside from Georgia and and Bama, the SEC kind of sucks. I'll say it. Yeah. Texas yeah, A and M. Texas A and M just lost. Florida just lost. I'm not. I'm not going to crown Kentucky by any means. Um, George is obviously very good and Bama is obviously very good. No one's going to argue that, but who, who else in the sec are you actually like afraid of Arkansas Jared, seems could, to be a yes. decent football team, but to me, they're just Southern Wisconsin. Well, can I convince you that Arkansas is the third best team in the sec at this point? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Again, low bar. Yes. Probably true. Very low bar. Yeah, gangland. I've seen that making the rounds. Um, <laughs> let's let's just skip right over that. Um, Oklahoma beat Kent State thirty three to three. Don't know why you have that one circled, but okay. Um, but Kent State did cover, so you know. Yeah, there's uh, it's. It, this game was ugly for a long time. Uh, it, it was closer than the final score looks. Yeah, I guess that's true. I, I Oklahoma is ranked very highly just because they're Oklahoma. Yeah. Um, without Lincoln Riley, they're, they're going to fall off at least a little bit. Um, I don't like Venables, so. I mean, it's, it's just kind of a wait and see, right? Like, yeah, he could be good. We'll see. And maybe they're having a culture shift. I know they lost a lot of talented guys to the portal because they went to USC and there definitely wasn't any tampering there. I promise. <laughs> uh, yeah. Speaking of the SEC being garbage, uh, yeah. Auburn squeaks one out against San Jose State. Mm. Yeah. 24, 16. Um, yeah. San Jose State. Yeah. Yeah. was a 24 point dog in this game and they, they almost won like, 24-16. The game was very close the entire game. Um, but and 
if you look at Auburn's schedule, but uh, but Auburn scored twenty four, unlike everyone else we've talked about so far. Yeah, you're right. They scored the exact number they would have needed to have a push. You're right. My my fault. Oh no, no, um, you, but you're right. That would have just been a push. Yeah, uh, they um, didn't get it then. It doesn't count. Also, if you look at the box score of this game, which why would you? Um, you would notice that Auburn was losing this game at halftime. Like it's not like this was like a. Oh, yeah. Auburn scored 21 points and, and San Jose State had six. And then they just happened to score 10 points in the fourth quarter and Auburn kicked the no, no, like like San Jose State was was kicking their ass like they were they were winning this football game for a very long time and still had a great chance to win it going into the fourth quarter. Um, and Auburn needs to shape up because do you know who they play next week, Jared? Clifford, the big red dog. They do play Clifford, the big red dog. They play against Penn State. Um, which if you guys want to hear Jared's thoughts about that, you can listen to the Friday episode. Um, sure. It'll probably be on there. Um, probably. I mean, the games yeah. next week are terrible. So I haven't looked yet. Oh, they're bad. Okay. So probably then. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it yeah, is Auburn's time. Bad. Um, oh, it is time, Austin. Uh, it is time to talk about, we've been teasing it the entire episode. It is time to talk about Nebraska who lost to Georgia Southern. Yeah. Um, How bad? By Scott Frost fired. Like, you, you don't need to hear that from us. Like, you you are, if, you, if you're watching a college football, and it's Tuesday now, you're not hearing this until at, at earliest Tuesday, you don't need to tell us Scott Frost has been fired. You don't need us to tell you that Scott Frost has been fired. Um, but just so we're clear, because I don't know how many people know this, and I'm going to jump into our breaking news channel real quick to read this verbatim. The buyout, we're talking about Scott Frost's contract here. The buyout was set to reduce from 15 million to seven and a half million on October 1st. Nebraska paid an additional $7.5 million to fire Scott Frost now versus three weeks from now. Yeah. Jared, can I make it? Holy shit. Can I can I make it even worse for you? Oh, how? That's a, that's a bar. We 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 we're talking about clearing some low bars, paying a seven point five million dollar extra buyout to do it now versus mm-hmm. three weeks from now is a high oh, bar. Oh, oh no, Jared, I can I can make it worse. Um, so do you know who Nebraska plays next week? Uh, no, I forget. They play they play Oklahoma um okay at home they play oklahoma which I'm, again if you want to hear jared's thoughts on that especially Rock, with yeah. scott frost gone I, I went through the games there's not a lot of great ones next week it'll be on the friday episode um you can feel free to watch that and see the thoughts on the oklahoma nebraska game maybe but beyond that maybe eh, eh, probably ish yeah, we'll see I, I, um, the it, only i don't like i don't like doing the big number games unless it's ohio state so and i feel like that's going to be a huge number yeah, that's possible. Regardless, my, my my point is the buyout would decrease on what, what was the date? October 1st. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Next week is uh, af- after Oklahoma, the week after. That's Nebraska's bye week. Mm-hmm. That means that they fired Scott Frost with one game in mind. Just the Oklahoma game. Uh Honestly, I know you have pl- you have planning that goes and you have, you know, obviously you have game week coming leading up to the Indiana game. But theoretically, they could have fired him with just one game left on the schedule to, for seven and a half million dollars. Uh, well, here's the thing. I think that that's maybe I don't think I don't think that makes it worse. Um, I think a lot of that is them trying to. And again, why this week versus next week? I think is a good question, but I think there's a lot of, well, give the new head coach a chance to install, to fix his stuff during the bye week. Give him a chance to just practice and put stuff in and try and fix stuff without a looming football game ahead of them. And and I can understand that, but also you've got to keep in mind that they're probably not changing things up that much considering this is the associate head coach, the guy who was here with Scott Frost. And also it's the middle of the season. It's not like you can drastically change your offense or drastically change your defense. You, you just, there's no time to install things. So I don't know, regardless, it's a terrible situation. 
I wish Scott Frost the the best. He was a great coach at UCF, so maybe he he finds his way back to somewhere like that. Um, but he should probably. I hear just... Nebraska's looking. Oh, never mind. <laughs> you should probably take the season off. Um, I think a good name. This this would be my bet to look out for um, at the end of the season for Nebraska. I th- I think their new head coach is going to be Matt Rule. Uh, current head coach for the Carolina Panthers. Um, I, I tweeted out a list of, I think I ended up with eight names. Matt rule was on that list. Um, let me get to my Twitter. I mean, offensively, he could change things, some things up for them. I think he's really good. Like he was really good in college. Uh, it's not necessarily that I think he wants to come back to college already. Gangland. I think he's not going to have a choice. <laughs> yeah. I know. And, by by the end of the season, I don't think it's gonna. Yeah, okay. Um, Chris Peterson, always a good choice. Yeah. Um, Kevin Wilson, better than zero chance. Yeah. Uh, Bob Stoops, doubtful. He's been like coaching XFL teams and AFL teams. He might want back in. He's not like completely retired from coaching since he left Oklahoma. My thing is, though, if he wanted back in, he could have just came back and coached Oklahoma last year. But But maybe he didn't want to do that. And also keep in mind uh, that new uh, Fox and ABC or not ABC, NBC and CBS money kicks in next year. I'm just saying yeah. Nebraska can 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 you know do the proverbial dump truck of money. And again, I'm not saying he will, but I'm just throwing it out there. Um we just saw him in the horseshoe, Butch Jones. He's making Arkansas State not completely terrible. He had amazing success at Cincinnati and other smaller programs. Things didn't work out for him at Tennessee, but a lot of coaches have failed at Tennessee. That doesn't feel like a totally unique situation. Um, and I think that's a, that's a realistic name that would actually take it. Uh, Peterson, I don't know if he'd actually take it. Stoops, I really don't know if he would actually take it. Uh, this third name, I don't know if he'd actually take it. Matt Campbell. Feels like a lateral move. It feels like lateral move now. Yeah. But where will Iowa state be when the great reshuffle is, is over? Sure. Uh, cause Nebraska will still have money. I don't know if Iowa state will once the great reshuffle is completed and we have two power conferences and maybe two okay conferences. Iowa state's going to get stuck in one of those okay conferences and they're not going to have the same money as the sec and the big 10. Um, Lance Leopold, who we already talked about. Um, I mentioned Matt rule, uh, Bill O'Brien. I think is an interesting name. Uh, currently decoordinating um, at Alabama, I believe. Is that right? Um, Sounds right. Yeah. I think that would be a good spot for him. Um, let's see. Bill O'Brien currently is the offensive coordinator oh. and quarterbacks coach at Alabama. Offensive coordinator. The more you know. Um, was, was that your list of names, Jared? Yeah. I'm going to throw one more name out there and we we can just leave it at the name and move on. Um, Not saying it will happen. However, I think that there's at least a phone call. Bo Pelini. Oh man. There's at least a phone call. that's going to happen. I who's initiating that phone call. That is why I'm, but I'm not going to (laughs) say, I think there's a very good chance that Bo initiates it, but I think there is a phone call. Okay. Uh, that that one has as much chance as Urban Meyer, which is the name I've seen floated around. Although um, this, this in this way, I know who's making the phone call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, moving on, uh, Arizona State loses to Oklahoma State. Who Oklahoma State looks okay in the post Jim Knowles defensive era. They didn't look as good last week, but they look yeah, a little bit better this say, week. Yeah. Um, thirty four to seventeen, they win. They do cover um, Arizona, Arizona State's Arizona's, quarterback is Emory Jones, I think. Is is that where Emory Jones ended up? I'm pretty sure he did. Another another look it up, Kyle. Moment. Let's see. Emory Jones. Where did you end up? Arizona State. Yep. Okay. 
Um, don't know if that's a positive or a negative, but uh, um, USC yeah. uh, handled Stanford pretty well. Um, USC is just Oklahoma. Yeah. USC is just Oklahoma now. Uh, Oklahoma their West. defense is incredibly suspect. Their offense is insanely explosive. USC is they'll just Oklahoma. Lose a couple now. games here or there. Yeah, they'll probably lose a couple games, maybe to like a Utah or an Oregon or or they'll go undefeated like and get, get into the playoffs and get stomped in the playoffs because they're Oklahoma now. This ah, is this yeah. is how it works. Um, I don't know if Bryson's shot got any snaps. Um, it's a great question, but I don't. We don't. You know, we don't. We don't dig that deep into these games. Um, no. I circled Indiana Idaho for some reason, probably because. Idaho uh, somehow uh, stayed in this game for a while. Uh, Idaho scored the first 10 points. Um, Idaho ends up losing by only 13. God, Indiana sucks. Illinois might beat Indiana this year. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm now convinced of that. All right, Jared, one more game that we have left, and it was a... Really good game. Uh, it would have been really awesome to watch it. If but, I were uh, awake, I would have dropped the Team Chaos notification on this, but I, I was not awake. Yeah. Um, BYU taking on Baylor, and BYU comes away with the win. This was number 21 versus number 9. BYU wins uh, and upsets Baylor. Um, well, I don't know if you want to call it an upset because BYU was technically favored, but in terms of One rankings, versus it was an 29, upset. though. Yeah. Um, yeah, or it was you said one nine versus, versus I know yeah, versus, nine yeah, versus, yeah, okay, yeah, right. yeah. I did say uh, it wrong. Over, yeah, it was a very defensive game, which is really interesting. Um, Baylor was very defensive last year, even though they've been playing in the Big Twelve, which has gotten a little bit more defensive here in the past few years. But twenty six twenty in double OT. Um, I'm assuming it was a really fun game. I I really like this BYU game or BYU team. Um, Jared, they returned the second most um, production in the entire country on their team this year uh, coming from last year. So they are the team that I was referencing earlier whenever I was talking about um, group of five teams, like BYU is not a group of five team, even though they, they feel like one right now, uh, they won't be obviously here. Um, is it next year, two years from now? I believe it's next year. And by the way, I'm just now noticing somehow Notre Dame escaped my notes. Yeah, I was, I was going to bring that up after this. So, because you because you said in because like if if anyone doesn't know BYU is an independent team they don't belong to any conference and then that reminded me oh shit we didn't talk about Notre Dame yeah um but BYU does beat Baylor um BYU is really good this year I think uh they're probably going to end up in a New Year's Six Bowl their schedule is actually as far as for an independent pretty pretty tough I mean they they have another ranked well I mean ranked game coming up next week uh they take on oregon um they have notre dame later they they take on arkansas this year like stanford boise state like it's it's a legit schedule like it's it, if byu can end up with like two losses maybe even three losses they probably end up in a new year six bowl yeah uh, byu is a is a is a decent team um yeah i they're they're and by the way just and I think I said this during um, Sloop Picks on Friday. Baylor's not a top 10 team. Uh, no. They're they're not that good. I have no idea why they were ranked that high. Aside from, and again, I said this on Friday, they're just not being 10 top 10 teams. There aren't top 10, there are not 10 top team. there are not 10 top 10 teams. Um, you have to put somebody in the rankings, so. Of course, but I'm just yeah. saying, like, you get a real, I've said Quality this a thousand teams. times, you get a real severe drop off after three. And then after that, you get maybe four or five. I was going to say to seven. Yeah. That, that are a decent, like, like, second yeah. tier. Um, And then another real bad drop off after that. Um. Gingland says that BYU is building a resume for the college football playoff. I will say, if BYU happens to go undefeated, there's a pretty good chance, a chance to get into the playoffs. It depends upon it depends upon what's who 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 else is there. Okay. Um, if USC goes you, undefeated, then. which I think is possible, um, they'll get in. 
They well, let's, could. let's put it this way then, Jared. I, here's a question for you. The Pac-12, say there is... the Pac-12 sucks. USC could yep. go undefeated. So let's say that, you know, and I know it's early in the season, but just, just to get you on record. Say Bama Ohio can State drop sucks. a conference game and still get in, gangland. That doesn't, we've seen that well, a thousand so that, times. So that's my question, though. Let's say Bama loses to Arkansas, still wins the SEC, beats Georgia. Georgia's only losses to Alabama. Ohio State goes undefeated. USC goes undefeated. So you're going to see... You're going to see Bama, you're going to see Ohio State, you're going to see USC. Let's say the ACC and the Big 12 have two teams that lost a game or two in their conference championships. Does undefeated BYU get in over one lost Georgia who lost Alabama? No. I don't think so either. Unfortunately. I think it depends upon how they lost. I think it probably depends upon how BYU looked in their wins. Are they barely winning? Are they dominating teams? Like these are conversations that could probably be had um, that, that could affect it. But like, but like also, if Georgia, if Georgia three, got so. absolutely stomped by Bama in the championship game, then yeah. If they lose it on the last drive of the football game, no. Fair enough. Um, well, speaking of a team that is on BYU schedule, who I just mentioned, um, just, just to wrap this up with a nice little bow. Uh, Notre Dame, Jared. The Queen did it them this weekend. Mm. Queen did it. Queen with her last spiritual act before moving off of this mortal coil made sure to fuck over the Irish one more time. Yes, I made that same joke on Monday. I don't care. I like it. I like the joke. I'll make it again. Do you know the name yeah. of Notre Dame's mascot? I, 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 I yeah, think you, I do. You know, uh, I, I, I know, but I can't think of it. You it's, know how it's Owen. Owen? Yeah, Owen too. Oh god. That's so bad. <laughs> I, it's no it, it is actually like a real like stereotypical yeah, name. Irish name. I can't think of what it is. No, no, it's actually Owen. Is it really? Yeah. <laughs> No, I, I could have sworn it was like Seamus or something like that. No, I'm pretty sure it's Owen. No, I'll, I'll, if do they, do they actually spell it like that, Kingland? Um, they do. They actually spell it O U I N. They deserve. They deserve to lose all of their football games. <laughs> it's an old Celtic spelling. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah. All right. That's the end of the show. That is the end of the show. Yeah. Celtic, not Celtic. Uh, it is spelled with a C, although pronounced like a K. I don't, is, I don't know if that was the point you were attempting to make. It's there. Celtic, not Celtic, I think is what he was trying to say. Yeah. I think he was trying to do the, the GIF, uh, GIF thing. Or, okay, the GIF, GIF thing. Right. If you have to spell it with a J to prove your point, you're disproving your point. Yes, I agree. It's a GIF. The GIF. Yeah, and it's if you pronounced want to give with us... a soft G. No, no. Uh, yeah, it's 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 a GIF. Yeah, and if you want to give us a gift, you can join our Discord at discord.thesloopass.com. Um, you can also join us on Patreon. Hey, Kyle, you're I, fired. I, I, <laughs> I do want to mention that, the I, I don't know if we mentioned this earlier or not, the Discord is free. Like, the Discord is 100% free. There are some premium channels that you, uh, if you are a patron over at patreon.com, um, you can absolutely um, join for just three bucks a month. Uh, there are some exclusive um, members-only channels, but the Discord by itself is totally free. Um, you can come hang out with me, hang out with Zach, um, if you are a patron over at Patreon, you can go ahead and yes, exactly. It's uh, basically the price of a coffee. Um, gangland, that's correct. Um, but if you want to just join, see what the Discord's all about, you can definitely do that for free. Again, discord.thesloopcast.com. Uh, then if you decide you like it and you want to join the premium channels, you want to hang out, talk with um, me, gangland, Zach, um, everybody in the Discord um, live chat as the show's going on, you can definitely but do that. But avoid Nomad. Yeah, Nomad, yeah, 
No matter, I love you. I haven't seen you in a while. Looking forward to seeing you again, maybe at a meetup soon. Um, we do some of those sometimes too, some meetups. So again, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, there's even an exclusive Wednesday only episode that we, it's called Sloop Cats Only. Um, it's mostly just shenanigans, but um, if you want to come in there you, and view that, you can as well. That's behind the paywall, but most of the channels are for free. We talk about Ohio State football. We talk about national football. There's a lot of stuff in there, so feel free to to join us if you want to. Would love to see you there. This is normally the part where I say I'm done talking and then ask if there's anything done, anything in Kyle's corner. But you you did all of that already. Uh, but is Maybe. there anything more in Kyle's corner? Uh, no, just a uh, shout out to Kyle for being on vacation this week um <laughs> i guess um thanks for letting me sit in your seat for a little while uh you know i've been a long time listener of the podcast so it's cool to uh be on here and just talking with jared you know stepping in for kyle um so thanks for letting me do that um the the dick chair is, is very comfortable thank you for asking um so thank you guys for putting out great content thanks for letting me be a part of it um yeah you know we uh we appreciate it. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, uh, it's been a fun two episodes. Uh, make sure you guys tune in on Thursday for the preview of Toledo. Just just don't like kneecap Kyle with a wrench. All right. Like, don't get too used to it. Don't <laughs> don't try and. I don't know the. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that publicly yet. I don't think he's only talked about that in sleep. Yeah. It's only. But yeah, there might yeah, be yeah. some availability um, at the big at, at the beginning of the off season which you are aware yeah. of why, but I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about that publicly. Uh, so, hey, maybe jump in then too. Um, so that's it. Uh, tonight's ending music is another Snarls song. We played Snarls at the end of yesterday's show. Um, and we're going to play them again here. This uh, this week, we're, or this episode, we're going to play Marbles, uh, the Snarls song Marbles. Uh, so with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Snarls. <laughs>